वेलकम बैक टू डी एम्स क्लासेस बाय दामोदर महांती रिडल इंग्लिश आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड द फर्स्ट टू स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ द पोएम द रिल्स एंड आई थिंक यू माइट हैव एंजॉयड इट एंड यू माइट हैव गेन्ड ए लिटिल मोर नॉलेज देन यू एक्वायर्ड बिफोर नाउ कम टू द थर्ड स्टैंडर्ड The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the soul to me had brought. Now the waves beside them. Beside them means by the side of the daffodils. Where were the daffodils? The daffodils were, as it is told in the second stanza, the daffodils were by the side of the bay, along the margin of a bay. Now, the waves of the bay, the waves of the sea, were also dancing. You see, what type of harmony is there? when the daffodils are dancing the waves we are also dancing with them now we have two groups dancing groups two a group of daffodils and another group of then waves both they outdid the dance the sparkling waves in the both they outdid and this day this day this pronoun refers back to the daffodils now they outdid they surpassed they excelled they danced better than the sparkling waves the waves were sparkling the water was not constant because of the waves because of the tides because of the billows and because the light was falling on the waves therefore they were appearing sparkling appearing shining the daffodils danced in a better way performed a better dance in comparison to the rising and falling of waves dancing waves why because the daffodils were dancing in glee the daffodils were dancing very cheerfully very merrily because they were enjoying the dance because they were dancing very happily therefore the rapturous the merry the cheerful dance of the daffodils surpassed the dance of the waves a poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company now the poet as himself as a company as a friend of the daffodils and the waves when your friends are happy when your friends are making merry and if you are present there can you refrain yourself from that can you not become happy similarly a poet could not but be gay not only Wordsworth, any poet who would be present there has nothing but to become very very happy. Wordsworth, the observer, the narrator, had no other option, had no other way out to become happy, because in such a jocund company, in such a joyous, cheerful. company friendship when all his friends we are joyous when all his friends we are quite happy they we are merry making they we are dancing the poet says i also became very happy i share their happiness i gazed and gazed but little thought the poet became very happy because in that silent serene atmosphere 
observing the daffodils and observing the waves was the only option, only choice before the poet. Now, what did he do? He simply guessed and guessed. Guess means looking constantly without blinking your eyes. Without winking your eyes. Without opening and closing your eyes. I guessed and guessed but little thought at that time the poet did not think about anything else simply he looked on them quite constantly quite immobile quite motionless without opening and closing his eyes what will the show to me had brought at that time the pleasure, the joy, the poet derived from observing the dancing daffodils and the waves was just like a treasure, just like wealth, just like money, just like a valuable thing for him. But at that time, he could not think that this vision, this sight, this scenery, these daffodils would bring him joy in future. It was just like wealth for him. It was valueless, invaluable for him. Why? Why does he call it wealth? Why does he call the observation of the dancing daffodils and the waves to be wealth? Because for oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of a solitude. And then my heart with pleasure feels, and dances with the daffodils. For oft, poetic language, oft means very often, very frequently. When on my couch I lie, when most often the poet uh, sleeps on his couch. Now, you can compare this couch with modern sofa, with modern set, or rather, you can say, you can take it when the poet sleeps on his bed, having no back support. When the poet is not a fast asleep, but he is lying on his bed or sleeping on his, relaxing his body on a big sofa where two or three person, persons can sit. When I couch, I lie, on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mode. Whether his mind is free of thoughts, whether his mind is crowded with thoughts, full of thoughts, whether he is thoughtful, or whether he is thoughtless. In both the conditions, what happens most often? They flash upon that inward eye. They means the same daffodils. You see the name of this poem is daffodils. Okay? Although, first of all, it was named as I Wonder Lonely. Later on, the title was changed from I Wonder Lonely to the daffodils. Because the poet focuses mainly on these daffodils. In a vacant or in pensive mode, they flash upon that inward eye. The daffodils, the dancing daffodils, the daffodils found under the trees, by the side of the lake, and along the margin of the bay. They flash, they appear suddenly appear suddenly and disappear suddenly just like a flash light lightning flash they flash upon that inward eye inward eye means his memory to his mind that means whenever the poet sleeps on his couch most often the scenery the vision of the daffodils comes to his mind comes to his thought, revives in his mind, 
the flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of a solitude you see if there are ripples on water the moon can be reflected similarly if our minds are disturbed we can think of nothing else if our tone down by different anxieties different worries different troubles we can enjoy equanimity of mind balance of mind to recall past to bring to memory our past happiness or our past sorrow our mind must be quiet solitary quiet plain quiet silent quiet undisturbed now who is the bliss of solitude this means perfect happiness solitude means loneliness and solitary then when the poet was in a crowd when the poet was with other people this type of memory never comes to his mind only when he is all alone only when he is sleeping or lying on his sofa or on his couch then only the daffodils dance in his mind come to his mind that means he is taken from his home to the place where he saw the daffodils which is the bliss of solitude and then they they and then my heart with pleasure feels and dances with the daffodils when the picture comes to his mind when he closes his eyes when he revisits mentally to the field side to the valley where he had seen the daffodils he had seen the dancing waves what happens his heart his mind becomes full of joy full of pleasure he becomes overjoyed and when his heart becomes full of joy full of pleasure when he becomes totally oblivious totally forgetful about his present situation what happens he becomes happy his mind becomes happy his heart becomes full of joy and his heart his mind start dancing with the daffodils you see in the last stanza we can have the definition of poetry as given by william wordsworth what is the definition of poetry according to him poetry is the overflow of spontaneous feelings and emotions recollected in a tranquility when our feelings and our emotions our experiences our thoughts become very powerful very strong and if these powerful feelings and emotions experiences are remembered are recollected when we are quiet or alone our mind is tranquil our mind is not disturbed we are enjoying peace of mind we are not being disturbed at that time whatever we compose that becomes okay. only at that time the thought box comes okay now here we found the different aspects of this poem and if we become a little bit particular we can also find another thing mark the last line and dances with the daffodils and dances with the daffodils and here there is an alliteration alliteration means repetition of some consonant sounds and d sound daffodils d sound dances d sound now 
as per the planning of the five major women poets they must write such poems where the diction the language the wording must be very simple can be comprehended by ordinary people and all of them must try to compose love poems and here here the poet was well selected loving nature nature for him was a friend a philosopher and guide and those who feel disconsolate those who feel unhappy those who cannot adjust with their present situations must visit some places of scenery where they can derive joy where they can forget their <coughs> a thought they can forget their worries forget their cares okay now this much we can uh, say and in the next class we will try to give answers to some of the very important questions that can arise from this poem and for the plus two students appearing the council examination i think they can get the multiple choice questions their answers from my discussion now thank you all thank you all for watching this uh, video okay bye